Welcome everybody to the seasonal diet, eating what our ancestors ate, when they ate it, like we were evolved to do. We had a great point from one of our viewers last week, and it is something that I've thought about for many years now. Can testosterone be increased or decreased depending on the social setting and environment? And how does our natural way of life that we lived in ancient times play into all this? So we are going to look at some of the data and studies on this subject. We know, of course, in high testosterone environments, you know, like prisons or sports teams, they can be hormone filled with testosterone spikes um, in general, but specifically during an event, a competitive event. And we know this exists, there's been a lot of data on this. There is something called testosterone plasticity, in which your body naturally alters testosterone, providing you with a mechanism for altering behavioral responses to the environment these individuals are in. And I don't think it's just in competitive environments like prisons or sports teams, okay? I, for one, have felt this at the weirdest times in life. I generally tend to be very healthy. I eat well, avoid alcohol, I hit the gym. I'm always in fight gyms, MMA, staying competitive, getting good sleep, and all the other factors that we know lead to optimum testosterone. But even me, I often feel like my testosterone is low, sex drive is low, energy levels are low, even when I'm living at my healthiest. The strangest thing that I've felt in life is that I feel the best and highest testosterone when I was younger, living in Greece or in college, partying, drinking every day, eating like shit, barely sleeping. You would think that the unhealthy lifestyle would have made my testosterone in the gutters, but the truth is I felt amazing and just a whiff of perfume from an average looking woman walking by would have left me with a rock hard on sex drive through the roof and my body stayed in good shape even though I wasn't even working out and I was eating like crap. I thought that it's just because I was younger at the time, I was 24, 25 then, I'm 32 now, but the opposite is in fact true because I go on a trip like this every summer where I do the same thing, I'm partying, going to festivals, being unhealthy, and the exact same thing happens a little whiff of some perfume and get boners. And I haven't done any testosterone levels um, on this, but I'm 100% convinced that the social interactions and environment that we are in play an even higher role on testosterone than any other thing or lifestyle change or diet that we can do. So. Let's look at some of the studies. The problem is that not a lot of these are done in humans, but I'm going to link these studies down below in the description if you'd like to read more. In birds, increases in testosterone have been observed following an aggressive contest or social interaction. Uh, and they can vary depending on the mating system. For example, there may be a pretty good increase in testosterone among flamingos doing a mating dance or a peacock showing off its feathers to get the ladybird, but there would be a much higher increase in birds that had a more aggressive competition or even a fight to see who won the women bird's affection. Okay, that makes sense if we're, if we're in a competition. Um, to get the woman, that is, okay, we know that has been uh, uh, in humans as well. We also know though from a variety of studies in humans and animals that competition increases testosterone, but more specifically for the winner. Winning is definitely confirmed to raise testosterone, but even the loser in a good healthy competition where people you know, leave with their heads on, um, the f a fight will uh, raise your testosterone much higher than a dance off to find a mate, for example. But any competition seems to be a positive thing. It could be just something you tell yourself in your mind at the club at a comp little competition you have with yourself. Like every guy is trying to talk to this girl, but you were the one who got your number. That's a win for you. That's a win in a competition that's going to increase your testosterone. Also interesting what they found in some of these study is that in monogamous bird species, um, they displayed greater increases in testosterone. So an environment where one mate chooses another mate has higher testosterone levels than environments where just everyone's having sex with everyone and sleeping with whoever they want. 
What they also found in another study is that in mice, testosterone levels were about the same between male-female monogamous environments as they were in male-male environments, okay? So to give an example, even though you may think that an all-men's prison or a competitive MMA gym, for example, might have everyone in there with high testosterone, but if this study in mice reflects similarities to humans, it turns out that the guys hanging out in maybe nightclubs chatting to women every day, they would have equally high testosterone levels as an all-male environment engaged in competition. So the women being around seems to play a huge importance. And again, these studies are in animals, so we can't say the same is true in humans with complete certainty. But I definitely have some experience uh, and, and I think this to be true in life, I believe. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. I would have loved to see some varying factors in some of these studies, like uh, does the diet and lifestyle of the mice or birds have any effect? Were they lab rats fed crap? Or, or does diet have a big effect on testosterone too? I don't know. Those were not covered in the study. I'll give you one more study though, and this one is actually on humans compared to animals. And what this study did was examine dominance behavior, referring to the motivation of an individual to achieve or maintain a high social status, which appears to be achieved non-aggressively in primates only. So that's humans and, and different uh, monkeys and apes and those types of things. So there are quite a, a, a bit more of these studies. I'll link them all in this, the description if you want to read. But to finish off, summarizing that last one, all male species have an inherent primal need to achieve a high social status. I'm not saying all men want to be bullies and rule over people like a dictator or a king, but every single man, every single male in this world, human or, or animal, they want to be respected and have high status in their community more than anything else. And in environments where that is prevalent, testosterone levels have shown to be higher. Now in most animals, this is achieved through violence, okay, beating up other males in a physical competition. But in humans and also primates, the social status can be achieved through other means. Maybe you're a provider, maybe you're rich, maybe you're whatever, maybe uh, you're the best painter, maybe you're the best singer in your monkey tribe, I don't know, whatever. So high testosterone uh, makes us aggressive and definitely competitive. These studies have linked those two. This is just the natural way of the world, but it doesn't necessarily have to make us violent. There are other ways to achieve that social status. Like I said, you can make money, you could be the boss, you could be a coach or a leader or the best singer out of all the gorillas in the jungle. You can be the orangutan with the longest arms and the ladies like that. It doesn't matter. It just means you have to be respected in your community. Very important. All this together plays into how social interaction can increase your testosterone. And it turns out that ancient humans and their way of life, they had it spot on for the most part. Closely knit communities, small tribes or villages, monogamous societies, competitive societies, males looking for status to be respected by those around them. So he will get the first choice of the best females. Is this lifestyle even possible in this day and age? It might be, but we see ancient humans had this naturally, but we really have to go out of our way to achieve this optimal environment. Like lifestyles that we have just been put in even though we don't want to live that. You may think, for example, a guy who is a healthy MMA fighter would have high testosterone, but the social lifestyle is not optimal for that. A guy like me who just works all day with very little or if any other peers around then goes to the gym with little social interaction and even less girls around and maybe I'd go to the supermarket and see some people there but damn people are ugly these days sorry Americans but <laughs> you guys are pretty ugly in general I live in Denver now but even when I lived in Los Angeles I maybe saw one good-looking girl a month Coming from Scandinavia, Norway, it's a, you can't even walk out your door without seeing a, an absolute 10. But um, yeah, we know that uh, Norway, uh, Scandinavia is good looking people. But even in Scandinavia, they're not 
a very social country and most people would not feel that sense of community uh, that ancient humans would have had. So Scandinavia, I'm not saying that's an optimal place either. The closest I feel to this ancient lifestyle is when I'm in Greece or if I'm at some festival where, you know, everyone and you're talking to everyone and you're chatting and all these social interactions this lifestyle is optimum for testosterone of course it's not good to be partying and drinking every day we can't just go to festivals all year round but to the regular guy maybe trying to get maximum testosterone maybe you are eating healthy staying super disciplined going to the gym getting enough sleep and sunlight and all these good things it might help that guy to let loose a little and go out to a club or even once a week at some event or just get the taste of that social environment that our ancestors did. So that's the best we can do today unless we really move off grid and create a tribe ourselves. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys feel this same increase in testosterone uh, when you have more of a social setting, you know, thinking back to high school or college or any, any points in your life where you had a good social life um, let us all know down below that's why I make these videos so we can figure these things out and uh, figure things out when the scientific community is not going to do studies on these things